Hey everybody and welcome. This is not a sponsored video. I reached out to this company after seeing it online because I thought it was neat. They sent me one to play with, but I have no skin in this game. So this is a Lisa T uh, power station, solar generator, whatever you want to call it today. And it's got some very interesting features and it is the least expensive power station that you're going to find. It might work for you if you can kind of get around the quirks. So let's step through it. We've got a thousand watt inverter with one AC outlet. It surges to 15 or 2000 watts. We've got a 12 volt cigarette socket and we've got some USB ports. We've got a little watt meter built in. And then the charge ports are on the side. It goes from Anderson to MC4 to hook up your solar panels. It has a 10 amp MPPT charge controller inside of it. I wish that was bigger, but is what it is. This thing is $160. Why is it so cheap? Well, here's the caveat. This only comes with the enclosure. There is no battery inside of it. It is designed to be a DIY. If you want to order the cells off AliExpress and make your own battery, you can do that or the price of 100 amp hour lithium ion batteries has fall, or lithium ion phosphates have fallen dramatically. I've seen Zoom 100 amp hours for around 260 bucks. So $260 for the battery, $160 for the battery box, and you're at 420 something dollars for a thousand watt hour power station. The least expensive unit I've ever seen is the EcoFlow Delta, which is about 800 bucks for something roughly equivalent to this. There is no AC charger included, but the company sells a 20 amp one for about 40 bucks. So still for under $500, you can get to a thousand watt hour power station. <laughs> that is really impressive, but I'm going to show you a way to make that even cheaper. If you notice, my unit is on a furniture dolly from, I think it was Harbor Freight. The reason for that is inside of my unit is a 100 amp hour AGM sealed lead acid battery. Now, why did I do that? Well, brand new AGM batteries are about $150. I happen to get the one inside here used off of Craigslist for under a hundred dollars. So that means that I have a, a uh, roughly a thousand watt hour power station for under 300 bucks. Now, it's not easy to move because it weighs about 80 pounds. But if you notice where I am, I'm in my garage next to my beloved chest freezer. So what I have done is basically created a ginormous UPS to run my chest freezer. My chest freezer has been unplugged for about a year. So I started it up dead cold. Um, it, this unit was able to get over the startup surge, which was you know about 800 watts, so it handled that just fine. And now we're hovering at about 92 watts while this thing is running. And that is cooking just fine. So based on my calculations on other testing, this battery should run my chest freezer for about two days with no solar. This is one of my 190 watt solar panels, which is about the max that that's going to handle. So for $150 worth of solar, I can plug into that uh, battery box and keep my chest freezer going essentially forever. If you are someone who needs a CPAP machine to sleep, this is another great option because you've got a cigarette socket here. So you can get a, that 12 volt adapter for your CPAP and plug in and skip the inverter. Park this thing next to your bed and it should run your CPAP machine for four or five days with no solar. This is my beloved electric blanket and I would have killed for this thing during the Texas freeze a couple of years ago. I've got it plugged in here to the power station and you can see it's only drawing about 90 watts. I know from my testing that it'll cycle on and off throughout the night. So I should get one to two days out of this thing running the electric blanket with no solar. 
So instead of using a buddy heater and worrying about gas and CO2 and fire hazards, I could just power my electric blanket off of this thing at night and then recharge it during the day. If you're thinking about building your own power station and thinking that you can do it cheaper, I'd like to introduce you to somebody. This is Gladys. Uh, this is a power station that I built based on the milk crate craze that Will Prowse kicked off. And I think that it was valid two, three years ago, but as the prices of stuff have fallen, I don't know if it makes sense anymore. Let me explain why. So the cart itself, I think it was 30 bucks because it's on wheels and it's got a little handle. So it's a little easier for me and my wife to move it around. On the outside, I've got a 20 amp charge controller. I think this was about $100. On the other side, I have a 500 watt pure sign inverter, and it was about $85. On the front, I've got one of these little insert things as USB ports. This was $15. The 12 volt cigarette socket, that was $15. Circuit breaker was $15. Fuse block was $15. 8 gauge wire, heavy crimp terminals. And then there's a bunch of other things that you don't think about until you start building this stuff. You need ring terminals, eight gauge wire, an anvil for the crimp terminals, a sledgehammer for the anvil. So there's all sorts of extra parts and pieces that you need to build a station from the ground up. Whereas the Liton box, it's already done. It's already put together and you don't have to buy a bunch of extra. So if you, if you stop and you think about all the little extra pieces for the features that you want, and you add them all up, I don't think that you're gonna be able to build this as cheap as you can buy that box for. The biggest limitation to this thing is its solar charge controller. It's limited to 10 amps with a 45 volt input which is essentially going to, in the real world, going to limit you to around 200 watts or so. Uh, you know, we get five hours of peak sunlight in Texas in the summer, three to four in the winter. So that's going to be different depending upon where you live. I wish it had a 20 amp. There is a bigger version to this uh, that has Bluetooth and a bigger inverter and a 20 amp controller. But I don't know if it's really worth it, you know. If you think about the basic things that you could use this for, like chest freezer, electric blanket, CPAP machine, those have a low enough draw that it shouldn't matter, that 150 to 200 watt panel should be enough to keep up with it. So add an MC4 extension, plug into the side, and grab you a panel either off of Amazon or off of Craigslist, because there are some smoking deals out there. And if you were to combine this with an AGM battery and an $8 furniture cart, you can have a pretty robust system for not a lot of money. Hey, if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up and drop a comment down below. Hey, thanks.